Yeah, get on blue. Yeah, I'm psyched out. Yeah, put me in the ward. I'm a one on one. Yeah, some shit you can't afford. Really about that action. I could win me in the ward. <laughs> Bitch, I'm cut different from a blade of a sword. Ooh. MVP, MJ, small four. Certified clutch if you win it. I'm all. Ooh. Welcome back. Thank y'all for tuning in this Monday. We we still here with Ahmad Wallace, my co host. We sitting here talking about different topics. I think you got a couple things you want to discuss too, but uh, let me move this up so that way y'all can definitely hear me. Once again, welcome to Clocked Out. My name is Jamal Lamaz. Lamaz is everyone calls me, and this is Clocked Out, where entrepreneurs find some downtime to just chill, relax, and just unwind and talk about entrepreneurship and the journey and what like the real nitty gritty. Nothing sugar coated, straight to the point. Last week we talked about really just finding your why and personal branding and why that's important and i wanted to we, like i said we got my wireless here give it up for him you know for being here and um kicking it with us um this week we want to talk about how your entrepreneurship is going and like from when you started um and you know from when you started where it's go, where it is and where it's gone what the vision is for it because us as entrepreneurs we our minds just be going. And when we started it, we probably didn't envision it. This is where it was going. Like some people's business has shut down but then restarted. Some people some yeah. business had to re re revamp, rebrand and right. stuff like that. So Supreme Fit. From when it started to how it is now. Tell me how how your entrepreneurship is going. Well, pretty much um how I started. Well, we'll go back to the beginning how I started in 2015. Came home from school 2014. I gave myself a year to train, try to make my NFL dreams come true. Okay. That didn't pan out. So here I am now, I'm back in South Florida. No NFL. Where were you? Uh, Central Florida? No, I, w- I went to school in Louisiana. Okay, college. okay. So I came back from Louisiana back to Miami. I was training down here, hoping to make some teams, didn't make any teams. Now here I am with two degrees. And in the degree field, I don't know anything about sociology and psychology. Never did any internships, don't have no passion in either one. Just had to get degrees to keep my scholarship active in college. Mm-hmm. So now I'm here, what I'm going to do with my life. I'm like, man, so I'm sitting back at home. What am I good at? What am I passionate about? Mm-hmm. Well, stuff like that. So one thing I've always been good at was motivating others. I was always into sports. Mm-hmm. And to that point, I was just still working out. So I'm like, okay, man, I know how to work out. I did do some um, stuff like that when I was in college, helping my strength and conditioning coach mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So I'm like, man, okay, maybe I could be a trainer. But then I knew, I'm like, man, I know for a fact I didn't want to train nobody at the gym. Mm. So I'm like, so that's my cousin, man. So what should I do? He's like, man, we can start a business. No, I cage. And um, he, uh, he went to school for business, so we just put our brains together. He like, what you want to call it? I'm like, man... Growing up, I've always been extraordinary. Okay. I've always been above average. Supreme. Everything. And I like, I can't call it extraordinary. Mm-mm. And I'm like, what's another name for it? I'm Googling like, what's some you know, syllables. And, and I'm like, mm-hmm. doing the work. Doing the work. So I like, Supreme. I like, it hit me. Mm-hmm. Supreme. Supreme fit. And I'm like, man, it's going to be one big family. Okay. Supreme fit fam. And that was it. And ran with it. And I wrote it down. Ran with it. As soon as I wrote it down, the next day we came back to the house. I started. I was. I used to be an artist. I started drawing. I drew my own. Me and my cousin. I drew the logo, and mm-hmm. he like helped me. Like, put this in there. Put that in there. And we got the first logo. And after that, a week later, paid the bread to get the LLC. And this is moving like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I started training my my little uh, cousin. She was in high school. She was a dancer. Mm-hmm. I trained her in a dance team. Like, what well, you got to think for? Got dancing. them ready. Got them ready for <laughs> homecoming. Then they came back for prom. Got them ready for prom. And I had like a lot of uh, people I knew. I trained a few people, mom. It was like that. I was, I was training outside. Man. I was outside first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Um, then I had a vision of what I wanted to. I knew I, I wanted to open a gym. I knew that's gonna be that's, a, that's like a ten year plan. Okay. I already knew that was gonna be a five to ten year plan. You can't just open a gym. Okay. So I'm like I'm doing train, 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 make some capital, get some money, mm-hmm. get my name out there, get some results in. You got to put the work in. Yeah. Handle with fist. I'm like okay, we are gonna get up and do it. Um. And every day, as as months went by, mm-hmm. more ideas started coming up. The business plan started getting big, broader. Uh, started putting everything on paper now. 
Um, we talked about business plans. We talked about that yeah, like so, two weeks ago. Like I said we had it on my head, but not, you know what I'm saying? I could have sat back and said, oh, let me get all this stuff ironed out before I start training. Correct. I, I said, no, nah, I'm going to start training now. There you and go. Let it work its way out. And figure it out. And it worked its way out. And um, yeah. And um, so I did that for a year, 2015. I started that. And then, boom. In the 2015, 2016, I, I became a police uh, law enforcement officer. Okay. So when I became a law enforcement officer, nine months, I had to do the academy. So them nine months in the academy, I'm still training. Mm -hmm. nah. Still still doing your purpose. So what I was doing now, we had to be at the academy for seven in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm training at four or five in the morning. Mm -hmm. Go to the academy, get off the academy. I had to study, train again. I did that for nine months. Nine months. Nine months. <clears throat> Boom, then I became an officer. Now, when I became an officer, my schedule changed. You, know, you got to get the rookie schedule days. So I had to slow down. I, I basically almost, I ain't completely stopped, but it was basically stopped because I was only training like two or three people at a time. Okay. But I kept the business month running, kept the LSE fresh, kept the pen of dues. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, you got to so pay, said, well, you gotta so pay said, it monthly, right. well, yearly. So I said, this time, this time, I already had the plan I want. I had my vision. I knew what I wanted. So I said, you know what? Since I can't train the way I want right now, I'm going to use my time wisely, mm -hmm. which is at my nine to five. Okay. So I started busting my ass. Mm -hmm. I worked crazy over time. Mm -hmm. 56 hours OT, 80 something hours OT. See, working, mm, working, mm, saving money. Mm. All the fun is furnish my business. People got to understand. He just said something to y'all. You got to understand that he worked his nine to five to fund his vision. Yeah. So he, he already had a plan for himself. And that's how I got here today. I was working a job. I quit the job, but I was funding and I was stacking and I was developing the plan so that way I knew when I quit, I got to put my plan into motion. Right. And that's what you did. Yeah, so um, maybe I did I did three years. So after that first year, I think I had a law enforcement job. I couldn't train that much. So that for, I one whole year, I was killing myself OT. I mm -hmm. had no profit to profit, so I don't care. I'm a mm -hmm. hard worker. I said the vision I have for my business and for myself, nothing was going to stop me from getting this bread and making this business Keep what going. it is. Mm -hmm. So um, after that first year, I guess came my second year in law enforcement, got some seniority. Now I get to pick up the schedule I want. Now I can st start picking up training. So now mm -hmm. OT slowed down a little bit because now I'm back training. So I don't have to do OT. I can supplement that back in my business. There you go. Plans. There you go. Mm -hmm. So I was still working OT because I still need to pick money, get merch, yeah. uh, get different certifications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, get different equipment because I'm still training outside. Yeah. So I had to get equipment to travel with. To travel to my clients. Damn, you travel so, yeah, to the like, so I used to, to train out my apartment complex, mm -hmm. or I go to that apartment complex, or okay. I had like four different gym memberships where I'm paying the highest premium on the gym memberships to bring somebody to bring clientele in the gym to train them. Correct, grinding, so grinding, something like that. So I'm using all the money I'm making to, to support my dream, and um, did that for about three years, three or four years, and then boom, I said I'm ready. I saved enough money. I got into contact with a realtor. I said, I'm ready, man. Okay. Let's get this gym. Let's get it. I said, what I got to do to get this commercial spot? Okay. How much, how about, about how much you, you drop? So, when I got with the realtor, we went through 10 different spots. He gave me a list of 10 locations. Went through them all, you know, a lot of them didn't fall through because of permits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, uh, plazas didn't want gyms in the plaza. Mm -hmm. And this plaza I'm in, I've been there for four years now. And the guy was like, yeah, but we didn't want the gym in here. Boom, it happened to work out. So, boom. I had to pay five thousand down closing costs mm -hmm. to get in the place. Then the guy, the realtor, he said he'd been working. He didn't help gyms open before, so he gave me contacts to go get the floor. Mm -hmm. So now I got to get gym floor. Okay. Gym floor, twelve thousand dollars. Turf and workout floor. So I've five thousand, twelve thousand. <laughs> we have seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand before, before we even open. Before it open, that just getting the spot. So when we get the spot right, mm -hmm. I'm still training outside now. Okay. Still okay. Still work. Okay. Got the spot. I go. That's when I get the spot, get the keys. And that next Saturday, we had boot camp. And I was like, hey, man, y'all want to help me paint my gym or my clients? Family. They're like, yeah, we'll help. Man, we went to Lowe's, got paint. We painted the gym ourselves. You see. After a, after a boot camp workout. After Saturday, a boot camp workout. workout they paint, niggas, then you done worked them out. We paint for, for four more hours. <laughs> so now the gym painted. Okay. I already got the floors on the way, but we wanted to paint before the floors get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already yeah. had to pay for the floors. So okay, you paint. in two weeks. Okay, okay, okay. That's okay. why we wanted to paint that quick. Yeah, right. So on that, they said, yeah, like, yes, I got to, that's money I had to pay. I only had to pay for the paint. I had to pay for labor. 
So, you know, I, I'm trying to D, D, uh -huh. D, what is D, what, DIY. Do DIY. It yourself. Mm, do it yourself. Do it yourself. You know, it's pain. How hard can it be? It wasn't yeah. hard. Yeah. We had fun, too. We yeah. bonded over it. Then the floor came, boom. Uh, after the floor came now, so, boom. As soon as all this happened, I got the floor, I got the paint. Uh -huh. I can start training in my gym. Mm -hmm. COVID happens. Damn. Boom. So now I got all this. I'm in the COVID. I happens. didn't even, I wasn't even. I wasn't even at 2020. I was. I'm sitting here getting into the store. The 17. Okay, cool. We working. We working. COVID dude. happened. So guess what? What happened? What happened? You can't have nobody in. No it's, business. It's, Remember, it's, the world yeah. shut down. This is COVID. Yeah. The world shut down. So now I'm paying rent for eight months. No. Yeah. How long? However long COVID was. Yeah. However. Long. Until they opened it back up to the world. I'm so paying rent came to utilize my gym. So what you do? I'm still training outside. Back. I'm back doing square one. I'm training outside. I'm still, you know, furnishing the gym little by little. Mm -hmm. But even when that happened, when the world shut down, it was so hard to find equipment because everybody, all the gyms were closed. All the commercial gyms were closed. Everybody all closed. Power. So now everybody's trying to buy equipment to do home workout because we was in the house for like a year. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, no equipment to buy. Man, I'm prayed over. I'm like, man, this is crazy. So I'm, I'm on Facebook Marketplace searching, searching. Come across this lady in West Palm Beach. She got a whole storefront, uh -huh. like a mom and pop storefront. They sell gym equipment. I'm like, okay, boom, how much this and that? I'm like, man, I, I want to come up there and see it. She said, if you come up here and see it and buy today, I'll give you like a 60% discount. I yes. went up to her storefront, brand new equipment. She gave to me 60% off and delivered to my gym. So now I got my gym furnace. So I ended up spending, so for all my equipment, another $10,000. So we at 27000 27000 We ain't even counting the rent I paid for all them months. Well, ho, 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 we ain't even that. Oh, well, damn. So we had, because you said 5000 just to get in the spot. 12000 for the uh, floor. 12000 for the floor. 17000 17000 for the, for the equipment. Easy, 30000 Easy, right now. That Not including rent. You forgot. I don't got that many clientele right now. Because I remember I was still working my job. And I, 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 my plan was to get start opening the floodgates when I get in that gym. I, couldn't, I didn't want to open the floodgates on the outside. Right. So, so mentally... Where was you at? Like I mean, I was kind of upset. You know, but what can you do? Right. But thank God, I still had a nine to five. So yeah, you no, know, the bills gonna get paid. I, I work my job, so yeah, I, yeah. I work OT, pay yeah. the rent to the rent, get paid. It was cool. And I said I had a little bit of money from the clientele, and then with my OT, and then I got my business partner, my brother. You know, we mm -hmm. was getting making it happen. You know, we was making it happen. We knew, you know, we gonna get it done. So you here we at? Here here we are, twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. Where we at? How we feeling? With oh, I'm feeling good, man. After COVID closed, um, finished, everything opened back up. It's just how I predicted. Okay. And it was like my prediction for my business and my vision for my go um, for my goals and like that. Plus, mm -hmm. more. I don't know what COVID did. Like, right. Man, I had a surcharge of just great mm -hmm. energy and clientele coming in. It just it happened, happened, and I for for, for to the day. It just um. Now I'm getting um, contracts with the city. I'm mm -hmm. doing stuff like that. Getting more commercial stuff like that. Getting getting on different people payrolls. I'm doing. I did. Uh, done had some uh, expos. Mm -hmm. I don't did some fitness and health wellness for different companies out of state. Okay. Um, I done did things for schools, okay. for athletes. Okay. And I done trained a few uh, uh, professional athletes. Okay. I done did some models, top models people may know. Mm -hmm. It man, just been up and up, man. It's, okay. been, it's been a blessing, man, to see how it grow. Like I'm saying, and it's so crazy because, like, like I said before, man, a lot of this stuff is people I don't even know. They're your best clientele. Yo, like, they're your best clientele. I got clientele that been with me since 2015. Right. They still with me. That's when you do good work, and when you when you giving results, and you being professional, it's and your crazy. brand is what it is. People yeah, believe man. in it. People yeah. people believe in it. So okay, so let's switch the topic. You know, work is work. Work is always going to be there. Yeah. It's gonna be there. It's gonna always be there. So, how is the dating life? Like, come on now. We know what Supreme Fit is. We know <laughs> how a mile wild. Not even Supreme Fit. This ain't that. This ain't. This ain't Supreme Fit. This is a mile Wallace. Mm. Like, is a mile Wallace single? I'm single. <laughs> I mean, I've been single since 2018. Since my last my last relationship, man. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, of course, I don't casually date. I don't been out with girls. I, I was talking to a few girls since then, but nothing really stuck, man. It's like it's hard. It's hard uh, when I'm on this path right here. A lot of people don't understand the path. They don't understand the work ethic. They don't understand you as a person. Speak. 
So Speak. it's hard for somebody Being to an grasp. Entrepreneur. So it's hard for somebody to grasp onto you. And like I said, I'm not at a point where I'm willing to take sacrifices for a relationship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. You know, so if, so, I, if, if we can't, if you can't meet me where I'm at for who I am, we just can't do it. We just remain friends. When I say, it's fine. I was just having this conversation with, I don't know who I was talking to. It probably was Nick Nack, whatever. I said, as it applies to friends and a partner or a relationship, you got to be able to meet me 50%. Yeah. And when I say, and the reason why I say 50% is because I know to invest 100% in the person, that's a lot. And especially entrepreneurs like us, you got to meet us where we at. You got to see where we at. You got to study where we at. Yeah. Because to date a guy like you, you got to understand, I have clientele. I have female, female clientele. I I may have female clientele that's gonna push up on me, but you gotta be strong enough to understand that. Mm-hmm. You gotta be strong enough to know that if I'm dating you or we're friends and stuff like that, that that's business. This is business. And if you can't show up for me the way I need you to show up for me, and it's not even being selfish. No, it's not. It's just the fact, the reality of who I am. Yeah. Like I'm doing all of this. I'm doing all of. Listen, I got enough stress with business and life. I don't need. I, I, need, a, you, I need just motivation, this peace. Oh my God! I don't need this added stress to, to my life. Exactly. So you know? dating, dating for me is it's kind of hard because half the time when I'm probably on a date, I'm probably talking about business, and I don't want to talk about business. Yeah, you know I mean, but I don't talk when I, I don't, when I when I do go on this. I don't talk about business, but when we do start talking about things about who you are, what you like, and things you went to. You know, I see that I don't be as interested in them as I think I am. Right. Because they don't, they're not there mentally. Oh. Where I'm at mentally. Okay. So we don't have nothing in common. Right. So I'm not stimulated with you no more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just now it just looks and it just cool. Okay. So what's your idea? What's your ideal girl? What's your ideal somebody that you know can well, cater first to? First of all, I need, I need a woman that's um, I need a woman that's in athletic world. Okay. Okay. I need a woman that's because I works out a lot. I like to work out. I ain't gonna say you gotta be a track runner. You gotta do something physical. Mm-hmm. So a good like a date for me would be like okay, let's go get on skates, mm-hmm. or let's go on a bike ride, or mm-hmm. let's go for a run. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. Let's go to a picnic. Let's yeah, let's go on an out day outing, yeah. outdoor outing uh-huh. like that. I don't, I need, I don't need nobody that just wanna walk the mall, or go shopping, and, and go eat restaurants. That's, no, that doesn't interest you. Wanna come home and cook me a healthy meal, mm-hmm. and wanna stay healthy with me mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. why I wanna be in the club. And stuff like that. That's 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 all superficial. It's cool to do that every once in once in once in again, but mm-hmm. that's not where I'm at. Right, 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 right. So right, I need right. somebody on my same frequency. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, it's hard. It's hard to find that. Yeah. Like, so I'm not even looking, honestly. But like I said, the woman I have came across, um, they just don't understand me for who I am. And they see me on the surface level. Yeah. They say, "Oh man, he got a business. Mm-hmm. He got no kids. Oh, good head on the show. La 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 la." I'm like the knight in shining armor for them, but they don't really get to take the time to deeply get to know me. That's a, that's and that's that's, it. that's when the class come. That's yeah, it. I see all. I, I see it all. I, I, like I said, I'm very. I pay attention a lot and I listen very well. Our entrepreneurship journey really has affected us as a person. You feel me? Like this is this journey is not for. God damn it! Damn holes keep falling out of it. This journey is not for everybody. Everybody's not an entrepreneur, and that's. You can agree that, right? Yeah, everybody's not an entrepreneur, not a leader, not a businessman, a woman. It's a lot more to it than what you think it is. You, would you have Would you have some advice for somebody that's interested in getting into the fitness field, interested in starting their own gym? What advice would you give to them? Inter- interested in getting into the fitness, like being a trainer? Yes. Well, before I say, before you could try to lead others on a fitness journey, you have to be able to lead yourself on the fitness journey. Damn. So you have to take yourself there and train yourself to a point before you can try to train somebody to a point. Like prime example, how can I how can I coach someone on something I never did before? Mm. I almost spit my wood out. You feel me? How can <laughs> Same <laughs> what you do. You, you teach people how to walk the runway, right? Yes. How could you teach somebody to walk the runway if you never walked it? It, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, so they, need to, they need to teach themselves and work on themselves first before they even try to 
you know, take on others. Now, if you just want to get into the gym, open a gym for the business side of it without being a trainer, even that, you need to, you need to sit down and and um, do some homework and yeah. understand, like, market, you know, the marketing and your target markets and clientele base and who you're trying to reach and all there's a lot that go into it, you know, the demographics, where you trying to open a gym, there's a lot that go into it. Mm-hmm. So you need to do your homework, research. Your research, and have knowledge about this. Cause, and then, and then, it's like buying a house. You know, people say, oh, I want to buy a house, I want to buy a house. Put your 30% down and buy the house. Now you got no money to furnish, and you got no money for... House poor. Yeah, your house poor. And you got no money for... Got the house. Miscellaneous things. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the thing that happened with the business. Business is very, it's functional. It's like yeah. a valley. You get the high moments, you get the low moments. And that's so glad that you said that because it's just like you gotta understand when you're in the when you're in this journey, you're going to have you're gonna have low times, you're gonna have slow times, you're gonna have times where though business ain't flowing in. I remember when we was recording, you were just like, shit, the gym slow. Yeah. Gym slow. And I'm like, Oh, all right, I feel you. <laughs> like, um, and I know you was telling me, you know, while we was filming, you was just like, I almost got evicted. I, I chose the gym over It's crazy. I almost got evicted, right? Yeah, yeah. Then almost. I up, then I end up did getting evicted. Mm. Yeah, and almost I, I was about to get it. Then I ended up catching up. I, you know, I said, I said to myself, man, I said, F this. I said, F it. Why well, keep stressing myself and fighting so hard to keep this place? It's not something I own. Let me just go and let this place go. Who's this apartment? I let it go. Y'all heard it here. Y'all heard it here. He, he said, you know, I'm just going to let my apartment go and I'm going to keep my business. My business me more than me in the apartment complex. Bruh, that's the realest shit I ever. I can sleep in my gym if I want to, but I choose not to. Bro. Yeah. I can sleep in there if I want to. My gym my gym is more important to me than I got them. Like I, said, I don't have kids, I don't have a woman. Mm-hmm. I can sleep anywhere I want. And, and people got to understand that, and I was having this conversation with one of my other guests, and I was saying that we make sacrifices that you probably wouldn't even understand. And we would have to, as entrepreneurs, we would have to, if we believe in what we got going on, it, a lot of people can just jump ship. Yeah, and go back to work. Yeah. And go back to work. Well, what, what, what's the fun in that? I had a career. I had a career job for six years as a law enforcement officer. Good pension, great health benefits. Okay. So I mean, it's so crazy, right? People are so scared to bet on themselves and go a hundred percent for themselves for two or three years, mm-hmm. but they'll work a job for thirty years for a shit ass pension. Ooh. That is crazy to me. Man. Why can't you just go? Two to three, two to five years, better yourself. Mm-hmm. It may fail, it may not. Mm-hmm. But in those, it, it, yo, and look how far, look how much you have done in those two, three years. And if it was, if even it was, if it, even if the business did fail, mm-hmm. that don't mean you failed. You right. learned so much on the way, so you can always start a new business with the new things you learned throughout those five years. And guess what? Guess what? The people that are working that job what? doing within the five years, mm-hmm. they in the same spot. Same spot. Same spot. Having the same thing for five years, mm-hmm. ten years. Having Only Excel. Thing changing this, 50 cent raise. Ooh. A dollar raise mm. every year. Horrible. Is, is they being fulfilled? Horrible. Are they being fulfilled? Are they making an impact on others' lives? No. Are they making a change in the world? Now, we're, we're not knocking people uh, no, listen, that, I, that, that choose that I life. Had a job. I had a job. I had a great job. <sighs> family. Because my family don't necessarily always understand that. I know on... Uh, well, they understand now, but on the show, you kind of, you briefly opened up, and we, I'm looking forward to, you know, possibly season two. Y'all heard of here. I'm I said he coming back <laughs> for season two. He going to give it. Got Yeah, man. like, it was a great experience. I had a lot of fun getting to know you and doing different things, and I say this all the time to Blue. I was like, yo, I might always call me and ask me, like, so what's going on? What's the numbers and whatever? And I say, and it's very motivational. We'll, whenever we talk, we probably catch up on some leisurely shit, but it's like business, and I and that's the type of people that I need in my life, and um and like friendships to develop into family. You feel right. me? Um, but family, it's like they don't always necessarily get it. They don't get it, and I know your background different than mine. Listen, no one will ever get it because it's not their dream. It was not put in. It was not put inside of them. So when they was put on their heart. And the journey they on, it's totally different than yours. So they would never understand. <laughs> I mean, some family members support you more, mm-hmm. but you gotta understand, man, the, the, where we come from as uh, as blacks. Yeah, you know, we like first generation of everything. Yeah, 
you know, all my family members know was literally working, going to school, get degrees, and working hard. Yeah. You know, I got, I got family members that's rich, but they work hard. Yeah, yeah. They, they didn't do entrepreneurship. They got good degrees, mm-hmm. and they went out and worked their tails off. And I wonder, I always wanted to ask some people that's, you know, that's doing nine to fives and stuff like that. Like, are you happy? Are you happy what you're doing? And I um and I always told this to my sister and she finally understand. I said, I have to do something that I'm happy and I enjoy. Listen, I wasn't happy. I I say I wasn't happy. Even you guys, anybody that worked with me, every day at work, all I do at work was work out mm-hmm. at work on the computer, writing on workout plans, prepping for when I leave them up and go to the gym. Mm-hmm. I was always said, I won't be able I'll probably be leaving in year seven. People already knew that. So you was already speaking you was manifesting without even Getting it like you were talking, you were actually even doing it. Listen, I know I, I can't be nowhere where I'm not. I don't feel fulfilled, man. Like yeah. it was literally ki- killing me mm-hmm. to go to that place. Mm, see, that's it not was crazy. Like yo, I can that's see not my ministry. <laughs> I tell you, I go to that place, I feel amazing. As soon as I step foot in that parking lot, I just feel drained, dead. You, it was crazy, weird. So, um. You know, still still on the topic of family, uh, how, I mean, I'm pretty sure we're going to get into more, you know, you could briefly just touch on it. Like, how is family supporting? How, um, are, how are you, how's the relationship, you know, like. Well, I got some family members that support me. I got some that come out to my boot camps every now and then. Mm-hmm. I got those that do, do um, repost my stuff and like that. Mm-hmm. You know, but I got some family that, that's, they, 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 they see how serious I am about it. Yeah. So now they know, because at first it was like, man. When you try to get, get another job, I can get you this other law enforcement job, get you this and FBI, and they see how serious it is. So now they're backing off. Yeah. So now they respecting my mind more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They see I'm really serious about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This ain't no fad. This ain't no no play play for me. This yeah. is a real deal. This real deal. Um, so they like they respect it for sure. Mm-hmm. Do they understand it? Maybe not, but they definitely respect what I got going on. Okay. You know, so anytime when I come around now, oh, they know, oh, yeah. Or they call me, or oh, you at work? They know, oh, you at a gym at work? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to leave them alone. They know I'm in there doing my thing. Yeah. So, um, like I said, for the most part, my family support. They, they, they like, they support what I'm doing because they, they done came to my boot camps. They actually put, a, put me at the gym and see that this man really working. He really got clientele. Yeah. It's like, man, this man really got a lot of clientele, people that really look up to him. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they support, man. You know, for the most part, most of my family support. Now, do they all come to my gym and have memberships? No. No. Nah. <laughs> I don't have no family members actually got memberships at my gym. Actually, yeah. no family members. Okay. But they do come, they come to my boot camps every, every now and then on Saturdays. Okay, okay. So okay. I appreciate that. Okay. And I said they do repost and share my stuff. So, and they sometimes they send their friends my information. So, yeah. you know, hey, yeah. it is what it is. And I think so, a lot of the best referrals come from family. Like, so, well, for me, it happened that way. No, I, Cage, no, no. My dog wants to be in every podcast that I have. <laughs> like, he wants to play. I was like, find somewhere to sit. But, man, it is thundering outside. This Crazy. You brought this. You did this. <laughs> like, it was. So- <laughs> I was sweating my Like, Miami is crazy down here. But, um, family, it, it's like, I for me, you know, being a dressmaker and how I started off and I was making taking it serious and stuff like that, that I think the word of mouth and the referral actually kind of worked out in my favor. Yeah. And, um. And I, I want to say that actually helped my business. Um, but from when you even said, you was just like, none of my family members actually have a membership. A lot of that is a lot like, I can't, te- I can't tell you how many times family member has asked, like, oh, well, let me get something. How much is it going to be? And I tell them, I send them the link. Go, you know, That's what I do. Go on my website. Buy it. Yeah. And it was like, well, I'm family. I should get, well, family don't pay the bills half the time. Yeah. And for the longest, I ain't like, in the beginning, I was very... Uh... I used to get, take it very uh, personal. Yeah. In the beginning, oh. I was. And I had, to, I had to really just, like, take a step back and, like, look, man. It is what it is. It is what it is. You know, I it can't is, take it, it personal, you know. And 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 I want to say, for to that personal aspect, because I used to take it very personal, too. And it's just, like, a shirt is only $24. And you want a discount on 24 But yet, you'll go into Gucci. Or you'll go Versace or wherever, all those other big brands, and buy it for three, four hundred dollars. Yeah, but my shirt is only twenty four dollars. Easy. Why is that? And I feel like 
And this is another thing that burns me up. Shouts out to my girl, <laughs> Miss August, because she has a podcast called What's Burn What Burns Me Up. And this is what shout out to you. What burns me up is when people say, Oh, you still got that little business. Oh, you still got oh, that's right. I know people, You still got that little gym. Listen, people say anything little to me. It ain't nothing little about me. <laughs> Period. So I don't even I just ignore you at that point. Yeah, like don't I literally ignore you. I don't answer the question. Yeah. Do not refer to my business as little. Like don't 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 say that. Cause uh, we, I can get, I, I can get petty with them. But yeah, I, you know. Cause I don't really, I don't put that energy there. Cause I got I say I got some other things to worry about. It, That's the energy I don't even even get. And with. and you are so completely right. You're so completely right. And then the thing is, when you check them, you be like, yeah, don't do that. And then they kind of say, oh yeah, like they they get a little. Yeah, don't don't do that because what I'm trying to grow is not going to be little. It's not little in my head. Exactly. So for you to refer to it, you kind of really you you're disrespecting me a little bit. No, no, you really just yeah, 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 like really, really. yeah. I can say you still working at that little job. You still work. Exactly. You still got that little paycheck. Like yeah, exactly. I, I can say I can say so many things. Exactly. And but I I don't want to go there. That's that's not the energy. Like that, you know. To sum it all up, it's like protecting your energy as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And um, I'll leave it. I'll leave my little tidbit for my audience. Um, and then you know you can do yours. Uh, I. I encourage all my entrepreneurs out there to protect your, well, to learn your energy first. Like last week, we talked about your why and your protection. Figure out the self-love, which is, that's my next topic um, for next week, for my next guest. Um, self-love and understand that your vision is not little. Your goals are not little. Your All that stuff is not little. So don't, you know, be able to navigate around those negative energies. Yeah. And um, I've learned that from you, even at the, um, well, even more with Nick Nack, because, you know, Nick Nack's all about that energy. Yeah. Um, but um, the whole incident at the uh, reunion, I was like, yo, I'm, I appreciate you for grabbing me because I didn't know where I was going when that whole situation um, transpired. And he was like, yeah, don't feed into that negative energy. Like, that's not it. That's not it. So my encouragement to my audience is to develop uh where you fall as far as like energy wise and how you can be able to protect that so that way you can move forward because this you're going to endure a lot yeah. of ups and downs you're gonna cry you're gonna be excited you're gonna be excited for the milestone that you reach and it's it's gonna be a lot of things that is you're gonna endure as an entrepreneur yeah who would you say yeah you hit on the head and I would say man cherish every milestone little or big because mm. um don't take none of it, none of none of it for granted. Yeah. And um, I'll say, man, constantly work on your discipline, cause that's gonna be major to your self growth. So constantly work on that. And like I said, whatever thing you have in your head that you want to do, write it down, mm. and just start moving forward on it, man. Like I say, just jump out the gate and do it. You never know, man. Don't be afraid to introduce yourself to people. Don't be afraid to put yourself in rooms. Just don't be afraid of anything. If the moment you're afraid. It's the moment you're holding yourself back. Mm -hmm. so just go for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is Ahmad Wallace here at Clocked Out. It's been an amazing. I appreciate you for coming, bro. Thanks for having me. And um, I'm pretty sure this is not going to be the first or last time that you're going to be here. Where we just actually talk about some more in-depth content. This is only season one. I got all my cats coming through from the surviving brand, the surviving family. We're getting ready for season two. And um, getting ready to start filming that very soon. So I encourage y'all to make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to Clocked Out Podcast. Make sure y'all follow my man, my my bro, Supreme Fit. If y'all in the Miami Day area, it don't even matter. If you're Fort Lauderdale, yeah, pull up. Yeah, pull up. Like, come on down. The gym is going there, it's not going nowhere. This is Clocked Out. I'm your guy, Lamage. Peace.